Hey friends, it's Cherie, and today I'm going to be giving you a detailed tour of my dream box. But first, if you're new to my channel, welcome, and if you're a returning person, thank you so much for your continued support. All right, let's get into it. Okay friends, let's get into this tour. If you haven't already watched the video where I gave you a tour of my sewing and crafting space, I do recommend that you check that video out. I will link it below. In that video, I walked you through all the areas of this room that I definitely do a lot of things in. I am a licensed family child care provider, so I do run a small family child care program in this room as well as other rooms in my house. I also utilize this room for my children. My children play video games in here. They do arts and crafts in here. My husband works out in here. And I do all of my sewing, drawing, crafting activities all in this one room. So if you check out that video, you'll be able to see how things were stored before and the reasons why it wasn't working out for me. I had decided that I wanted to reorganize this room and I needed to get rid of some furniture, but I wanted to replace that furniture with something that just made more sense for my family and for me and for my business. So I landed on the Create Room Dream Box and that's what you see here. And I actually was fortunate enough to become an affiliate with them. So I'm so excited to be able to share this box with you. All right, so what we're gonna do is I am going to walk you through all the different sections of this dream box. I definitely think that this is the way it's going to stay. However, there are some areas that I may tweak and to move around in the future because I do want to order some additional storage totes for this system. Um, but for right now, this is how I have it set up and I'm going to walk you through all of the things that I've put in here. And I wanted to put labels, but since I'm not 100% sure that this is the layout that I want, I'm going to wait a little bit, but that'll be a future video so that I can show you how I use my Cricut Maker in order to make the labels for my Dreambox totes. So I'm gonna bring you into the side that I utilize probably the most, and that is the side that I utilize for my family child care program. It houses all of my arts and crafts supplies for children, as well as some curriculum. All right, let me bring you in close so that you can see. One of the things that I decided that I wanted to do is I also wanted to store some fabric in here. I absolutely love fabric and if you've been following me for a while you've probably seen that I do quite a few fabric haul videos on my channel and I find that seeing my fabric it makes me more excited to actually get sewing at the end of the day when I'm really tired and I really just want to relax. It reminds me that I have some beautiful options that I could sew up and so I wanted to display some of my fabric. So even though this is the side of my dream box that I utilize to store all of my preschool art supplies, I did decide to utilize this section here to house some fabric. And these are just some of my favorites that I recently purchased, probably within the last four to five months. And believe it or not, in this single cube here that I've created, there's 52 yards of fabric. I know, it's incredible, okay? The amount of things that you can store in this dream box is mind blowing, <laughs> it really is. So what I've done to store this fabric is I have used comic book boards and what I did is I folded my fabric around them and put them neatly inside here. So quite a few of these bundles of fabric are actually six yards and then some of them are three yards and some of them are four yards, but they total 52 yards. I'm so impressed with the fact that I was able to fold my fabric this neatly in the first place, but also store it in a way that's functional and beautiful. It's really easy to just pull my fabric out if I need to reach the fabric that I have stored in the back and then tip it back in place. It's very beautiful and looking at it throughout the day encourages me to want to sew something at the end of my work day. Isn't it so pretty? <laughs> All right, so I guess what I'll do is I'll start with this outer door here. And here we have all of our finger paints and we also have more finger paints here. We have two bottles of glitter glue. We have our roll of paper towels, which if you craft with children or you just craft in general by yourself, you know it can get messy, so I really like having this rod here where I can put my paper towels. 
Down below the paper towels, we have some glue. I have Elmer's glue, I have some extra tacky felt glue, and then some super tack glue. I have some children's scissors here in both righties and lefties. We have a little cup of pencils, and these are the perfect size for the tiny little hands that are writing in my room. We have some paint cups, and we use these all the time. They do have lids that I'm storing in another place. I thought it would be great to utilize them rather than having them in a drawer. So I have some Play-Doh scissors here, and these little popsicle sticks are a counting activity that we use often. On one popsicle stick, there'll be a number, and then there'll be a, another popsicle stick that has dots on it, and the children have to pair their number to their popsicle sticks with the correct number of dots. So it's just a little activity that we use from time to time and I like that it's right here. Next we have some shaving cream and if you've never painted with shaving cream, you're missing out. It's definitely a fun activity for kids so we always have some shaving cream in our craft space. I also have some little clips here and we use this to practice picking up small items and placing them in different areas. We also use them for painting with cotton balls or our little pom-pom balls that you just pinch them and then dip them in the paint and onto the paper. It's just a fun activity. We also use them for number cards and things like that. Down here we have all of our painting tools. We have our little water droppers, and this is really great for doing any type of painting with watercolor. And we have lots of paint brushes in different sizes, including watercolor paint brushes. I have all of my little spatulas and knives in order to mix paint. And then we have a couple of other little paint tools. These are disposable cups that we use for paint as well as other craft activities. This is a little container of foam peanuts. Whenever we get cool packing and different packages, I always save it because they can be utilized for fun activities. And let's see, let me tip the camera so that you can see down below. Okay, so down here we have cotton balls and this actually fits quite a bit of cotton balls. And we have pom-poms in both green and white, oh, and also red. I also have some snowflake stickers in there. This is something that we use primarily during the winter time when we're doing holiday crafting. This one here has some more, and I have some different colors randomly in here, but it's mostly green pom-poms. And this one has pom-poms as well, white and red. Down here we have a couple of containers of beads. The kids in my room do lots of jewelry making, whether it be bracelets or necklaces, we always have some type of jewelry making happening. And we also have some foam glitter letters. The kids use this to put their name on different art activities. So we actually have two jars of those. Now right over here we have a big container of chalk. This is sidewalk chalk, but we also use it inside for arts and crafts. Now I do buy this a lot. We have two of these in our shed because we have a big driveway and the kids love to decorate it. Behind our chalk, I have a little bucket of felt. So in here there's different colors and sizes of felt. On the very bottom here, I have a little 13 by 13 storage cube and in here I have lots of circle time activity stuff. So I have some letter magnets, I have bean bags that we use for different activities. I have some decorations for our bulletin board. So these are like little pencils that I got from the dollar spot at Target and I just put the children's name on them. We have whistles in here. We have lots of curriculum. I have tons of these. Let me show you quickly. I think these are so cool. I got them on Amazon. And basically, I was running through a lot of activity workbooks, so I started photocopying them so that I wouldn't have to buy so many. And so I just put them inside these little plastic slip covers, and the children can write directly on them, and then they can use a dry erase eraser and remove all of their pin. So we have lots of different activities that are in these folders in this drawer, as well as a ton of other curriculum. Slide that back in. 
So now we are at this drawer here. This drawer here has lots of little <laughs> colored spongy popsicle sticks. Um, these are really great. The children love them a lot. So we have tons of these and lots of colors. We have these really great flag triangles that I have used for different activities. We have lots and lots of <laughs> these little pipe cleaners and lots of different colors. Now, pipe cleaners are not just for arts and crafts. You can actually use pipe cleaners for a lot of things. One of the things I use them for is for cleaning my sewing machine as well as my serger. So if you haven't tried that, you should really give it a go because it will pick, it will pick up all the lint that you don't want um, that's inside your machine. So that's what's in this drawer. In this drawer here, we have some random um, art supplies. I have a couple of things of watercolors. I have stamp stuff, so lots of different stamp pads and the little stampers, as well as some wiki sticks. Wiki sticks, we go through those a lot. My children love wiki sticks. And then we also have, as I mentioned before, we definitely save any kind of cool packing to use for future projects. So this is some packing that came in one of my subscriptions and I saved it so that the children could use it to make snow on their art activities. We also have some in black and this is actually a type of plastic but it's crinkly so it's so much fun to craft with and I'm so happy um, that I saved it because it's just fun. It actually feels like camera film. <laughs> so that's also in this drawer. And as you can see, I'm going to tip it up so you get it. There's plenty of room and space to add more things to this drawer. So this is a system that's actually going to grow with us, and I love that. On top, I have a little bag of felts. I love these felts. On one side, they have a poem or a story. And on the other side, I have stored all the little felts that match with that story. And sometimes the children and I, during circle time, will utilize this to tell stories on our felt board. So that's right on top. Next, we have our 10-sided dice. We have a counting activity that's for summer. And these are little popsicles that my preschool teacher and I made together. So these are really fun. I have all of our little small uh, circle time things in here. Like we have some alphabet cards for matching. Uh, we have some for different times of year. So this one obviously was for the fall. We have lots of CDs in here. And yes, I know CDs are old school, but I still utilize them in my classroom. So I do have lots of CDs in here. I have, again, more colors of matching alphabet activities. I have some counting cubes. And this is just one counting cube activity. I actually have several that are bagged with different characters. And for this particular one, it is <laughs> little caterpillars. And so basically, I will lay out a certain number of caterpillars and the children have to match them with the correct number of cubes. So that's an activity we like to do. I have tons of magnifying glasses in this drawer, uh, small ones as well as big ones. So that's kind of fun. We have a flower color matching activity. And so I have attached pictures of flowers to popsicle sticks. I have these cool little tweezers. Well, I shouldn't say little, these enormous tweezers. <laughs> Perfect for toddler preschool hands so that they can pick up things and put them on their activity trays. I have a little scooper. Now we used to have a center where they can explore and touch things and we had some sand. It got a little too messy for me so I took it out of the classroom and now we just utilize the sandbox outside. But when we had that, I purchased this scooper and it's so cute. I hope to find a way to use it inside the house soon but that's stored in here. And I also have some felt money. I love this little pouch. I actually got it from the dollar spot area at Target. And so that's everything that's in this section. And it's pretty full, cool, but considering how many things are in here, I'm really impressed by how well it's stored and how nice and neat everything is. Um, previous to having this drawer set up, it was hard for me to find things that I was looking for. 
for circle time. So I'm happy that all of this stores so nicely and I can see everything I need just by pulling it out. The next drawer here is lots of paint stuff, okay? <laughs> I paint with lots of weird things. It's fun for the kids, so we will try to paint with everything. This right here is bubble wrap, so we've painted with bubble wrap. We have some little plastic wire meshes, and we will do spray painting as well as sponge painting with these, and they just have little holes all over them. I'm actually gonna tip the camera up a bit so you can see better. There. So, all right, so that's something else that we utilize. We also have toothbrushes. We will paint with toothbrushes. These are our paint trays. I have several of them, but in this drawer I have only four. I have lots of watercolor paints in here. They're a bit messy, I need to clean those up. Sometimes we paint shapes using objects we find around the house. So for this, this is a part of a toilet paper roll. We have more of these clips and tons of sponge things. So some I've cut, some I've purchased, but I actually purchased a bunch of sponges at the dollar store and cut them into shapes. So there's lots of little shapes in here. I have some roller sponges of different patterns and shapes all in this little bucket. And I also have some more stamps. Here's another superhero stamp. Uh, what else is in here? I have lots of paint, so lots of these little paints in here. And it all looks so nice and organized. I'm gonna tip it so that you can kind of see. Can you see? Yeah, so all of these little paints are nicely stored in here. So that's what all is in here. And there's actually still room if I wanted to add more items to this drawer. Okay, so this top one I'm calling my seasonal art bucket <laughs> or my seasonal art tote. And I have some cut out butterflies. I have some leftover felt snowmen that we use for a holiday gift for parents over Christmas break. I have some Easter eggs, more Easter bunnies, carrots. I have Thanksgiving <laughs> little pictures for arts for Thanksgiving. I have some chalk activities. These are little cats for Halloween. But any random extra holiday art supply that I have left over, I put in here. And some of them, there's only a couple left, which is perfect for my two boys. So when they want to do some free art, they can pull from this bucket. These are little mittens. And then I have lots of these wooden uh, leaves. So that's what is in this one. All of these back in here. In this one, we have crayons. We have the smaller boxes of crayons, a couple large boxes of crayons. And in the back here, we have all the lids to my paint cups. So there's a different color for each of the colors of paint that we have. And this helps the children not to spill paint all over the table. In this top one, <laughs> this is fun. So we have a small portion of our, oops, I'll get that, a small portion of our Play-Doh on this side. We have tons of Play-Doh in this house, but most of it is stored in our dining room. And then these are all of the loofah sponges that we use for painting. In this one, we have colored string. We have different sizes of beans. And we have tons of different sizes of googly eyes. <laughs> and we have sequins and more googly eyes and lots of masks to decorate. And all of it fits so nicely. I do wanna point out these amazing little dividers that are inside here because it helps to keep all of your supplies nice and separated and organized. Okay, so now we've moved on to the small containers here, which I don't have enough of. I didn't realize how much I would love these little things. I adore them so much. So I'm thinking that I'm going to actually purchase another set. When I tried to add some during the 4th of July sale, they were completely sold out. Why? Because they are amazing, okay? So what I did temporarily is I saved my Happy Planner 
cardboard boxes. All of your planner covers, when you buy them through Happy Planner, they come with these boxes. Do not throw them away because they're so useful. So I'm utilizing this one here and I will add whatever I need to add to it. Um, but I have lots of space here and I wanna show you how much these little things store. It's amazing. In here are tons of <laughs> glitter glues, okay, in lots of different colors, okay? I'm not gonna take them all out because there's just way too many, but do you see how many are in here? I have a little separator here, but there's a little uh, divider separator for each of them. Isn't that amazing? I love that. And this one we have our pencils and erasers. You can kind of see it from the side view. I have a little sharpener. I have a little marking tool. I have pencils that have erasers, pencils that don't have erasers. So anyways, little pencil sharpeners. <laughs> That's what's in this one. Next, we have color pencils. And I bunch these based off of if they came in the same package together because I don't know if you've ever noticed this but crayons and color pencils over time they don't write as nicely or they might develop a smell and so I don't want them mixing up because I want to know that I bought these all at one time and these at a, a different time I don't know if that makes sense but it makes sense to me so if these start to write funky I know they're all bad because I bought them at the same time I hope that makes sense, but that's how I do it. And so I have two rows of color pencils there. I have Crayola markers in this one. And then just some leftover little Legos that I had from a set that my kids didn't want anymore. Sometimes I use them for someone who needs a little time alone. I can just set them up with a little activity and they can just play with whatever little activity that I put in front of them and this is one of them. And so we have some Crayola markers here. And this one I have some more markers. These are the jumbo fat markers and you can see I have a little divider right here in the middle. So I've separated two brands of markers. And this one we have popsicle sticks on this side and glue sticks on this side. And this compartment right here in the middle is empty so I can put something else directly in the middle. But I am just so impressed by how many things can fit in these tiny little skinny compartment totes. This last one here has fat jumbo popsicle sticks and then the back is all empty so there's definitely room to grow which is good because i'm always buying stuff <laughs> i almost forgot to share with you that on this section here at the bottom since i don't have very many of these smaller totes I actually store all of my Cricut cutting mats here. So I have my long Cricut cutting mats. These are all brand new, never used, in all the different colors, as well as I have the smaller Cricut cutting mats in all the different colors. So I store them right in here and it's like perfect. And I'll show you what that is in a second. Let me slip this back in. But it fits perfectly. It actually doesn't cause any issues with closing the door which is really nice. I was so surprised to see how many things I could fit in there and there's still some room in there. This right here is actually a little wire rack. It's a baking rack that I plan to use for tie-dye. So I picked these up on Amazon. I haven't opened the package yet, but it's ready to go and I love that it just fits right here. All right, we're going to move to the center section. Okay, let's start up here. What you can see here is a sign that I purchased from Michaels. I love this sign. It says, do what you love. And it has these beautiful flowers. And I love gold and pink together. It's one of my favorite combinations. So it was really fun to be able to find this particular picture. Now, I was just searching in Michaels for random art supplies like I often do. I need to stay out of there, really. But I just walked down one aisle and I saw this out of the corner of my eye and I just knew it would be perfect. So I picked up this sign and I think it goes wonderfully there. And every time I look at it, it reminds me that this space is a space that's beautiful just for me, that I can do what I love. So anyway, I really love this. And if you want one, like I said, I got it at Michaels. Right below the sign, I have some beautiful candles. They're all pink and gold. And these are all actually from Target. They smell amazing. I love every single one of them. Now, I used to collect candles all the time. 
and I found that I stopped burning them because I had small children in my house. So now I'm actually going to burn those candles when I'm sewing all alone and daycare or preschool has ended for the day. And so I'm really happy to have these gorgeous candles. And like I said, I got them from Target and there's three different scents and they're all amazing. <laughs> and here I have this really wonderful little container that I got from Target as well. And it's housing all of my adult paintbrushes, the ones that I don't let my kids use. And behind there, I have another one. And this one, I don't know how I'll utilize it in the future, but right now I just have some extra pins in here. But the cool thing about having these here is it's a nice way to store your items in a beautiful way. And there's still plenty of space behind those two jars to store something else if I want to. Maybe something that's not as pretty and I don't necessarily want to show off that much. It can definitely fit back behind there. This right here is an S for my name, Cherie. <laughs> I love it because it has these beautiful flowers on it and it matches my sign. I also got this from Michaels. Behind that, I have my very first camera and this is my very first uh, professional camera, DSLR camera, and it is a Nikon 5300. And I used that when I first decided that I wanted to really get into YouTube. And so I, I love this camera because it has a special place in my heart, but I have graduated to a camera that can do a little bit more. So I don't want to forget about this camera and I do plan to continue to use it for different projects. So I thought it would be nice to store it right there. And right next to that, I have a random pen that I love because it's pink. <laughs> and so I sat that right there. So if I need a quick pen, it's right there and ready for me. Right here we have my sewing books. And I absolutely love sewing books. And so I wanted to make sure that I stored them in a way that was easy for me to access because I do rely on them a lot. And so right in front of them, I actually have this really beautiful bookend. This book in says love in cursive and I love it because it matches my love up here in cursive and it's just coincidental. I actually got this on Amazon and I got a set of two so that I could put one here, but it's so gorgeous and it works really well. Right on top I have this book. It's not a sewing book. My sister bought this for me for Christmas and I haven't had a chance to read it yet. It's beautiful and so I wanted to display it and I also wanted to remind myself to read it so I put it right with my other books. Right above these books I have a container here that has all of my flashcards. Now, when you are teaching children, you often use different types of flashcards. And as you can see, this thing is packed to the brim with all my different types of flashcards. And I have some bilingual ones because I do teach the children a little bit of Spanish. So there are sight words in here that are in English and Spanish. There's numbers that are English and Spanish. And then we have colors and other things in here. I have my circle time alphabet cards my alphabet cards, my number cards, I have alphabet matching cards, I have lots and lots of phonics cards in here, and I have this cool thing. These are actually puzzles that the children can color and decorate and then put them together later on their own. And sometimes we will use this for counting activities as well. I have lots of these little workbooks. They are blank. You can get them at the dollar spot area at Target. And it's like eight books for $3. It's an amazing steal. So every time I see them, I always get a couple. Okay, now we're moving up into this drawer and it's a hot mess in here, but I'm going to show you anyway. <laughs> the cool thing is that I used this wonderful glitter cardstock to cover all of my totes. Now some of this glitter cardstock is actually Cricut brand, some of it is not, but I cut them all three by 12 to slip right in front of all of these. Now there is a wonderful template for Create Room Dreambox totes that you can download to utilize in order to cut all of your covers that actually perfectly fit all of the area in here, as well as this little area here, which is the drawer. Uh, and I actually plan to do that in the future, but for right now, this is what I've done. And it's serving me well because you can't see through this little peekaboo hole here, the hot mess that's in this drawer. <laughs> so what's in this drawer is actually leftover art supplies from previous activities. 
So this is full of random different things, sand, glitter, confetti, all kinds of things that was left over from a previous activity. Same here, lots of leftovers. And I want to still use it. I don't want to be wasteful because some of these things absolutely could be used again. But I also didn't want to look at it. <laughs> but it's nice to have a special tote that is just for this hot mess. All right, so the next one is stickers and tissue paper. And I'll let you see what it looks like from the side views and the back view. It's quite full. In this one, we have more art supplies. So those are all the things in here and there's actually still room in here, so that's good. Not a lot of room, but there's still room there. And again, not having this little center part cut out has made it to where I can hide the mess that's behind there, so. All right, in this one, it's another hot mess of art supplies. <laughs> it's to the brim. Yep. All right, let's move over to the other side and then I'll show you what's down below. So on this side, we'll start from top to bottom. This is all my things, okay? So now we're all done with the children's section and we're on to the adult crafting section. And so in this top tote, we have felt for my Cricut and these are leathers for my Cricut. We have some <laughs> removable vinyls, we have transfer tape, we have, what is this? Glossy vinyl in black and white. And they all fit perfectly in here, just like that. Put the felt back on top. Most of my Cricut supplies are right in this section. Whatever doesn't fit in this section is actually on my Cricut cart. And in here, we have all of my sublimation inks and vinyls. So this is a heat transfer vinyl set that I got from Amazon and it has lots of different colors. This one I also got from Amazon and I believe these are glitter. And so these are for when I'm making sweatshirts and I wanna put pictures or words on the sweatshirt. So they all are iron on, gorgeous. Like why am I not using this? So gorgeous. Lots of different colors in here. It's holographic. <laughs> and these are all my sublimation Cricut ink sheets. All fit in here. So that's two, four, six of those boxes fit in here. If you took them out of the boxes, I'm sure that you could probably fit more. And then right on top, I put my other vinyls that are for clothing. Heat transfer vinyls. Okay, in this one, I have more sublimation items. I have some infusible ink markers for Cricut. I got them on, oh no, no, I got this one on sale. And I have lots of, I actually have lots of the um, infusible ink markers by Cricut. I'll show you those, they're stored in another place. And all of these right here are iron-ons. So I actually caught an amazing sale with Cricut around Christmas time. Oops, and I bought all of these wonderful iron-ons. I thought they would be great for making t-shirts and sweatshirts and things for friends and family. So cute, so many of them. I hope you can see them. The reflection of my light might be making it a little difficult. But lots and lots of iron-ons. And then all of these are infusible ink sheets. So again, there's six boxes. And you'll notice a theme in my dream box. Most of my supplies, I try to keep in their original packaging and it's because I don't like mess. <laughs> it's easy for me to keep things organized and nice when they stay in their original packaging. 
So that's why I do that. Okay, so now these things here are all my planning supplies. I love planning. <laughs> I'm obsessed with taking notes. I love stickers and all that stuff. So <sighs> get ready. <laughs> so this one's packed to the top, completely full. I'll show you what's in here. Right on top is this amazing sticker book. This is more stickers. On this side, you have stickers that I've made myself. And then on this side, um, random different stickers that I receive from different companies and orders. That's what that is. I have, these are my teacher stickers that I got at some point from the clearance section at Michael's. <laughs> All right, um, I have my glitter markers, which I'm obsessed with. I got this from Amazon. And these markers I doodle with all the time. And if I'm not doodling with them, I'm actually writing in my planner. My planner is color coded because I like it like that. <laughs> and so for every new idea or plan, I switch my colors. So that's what that is. I have an adult coloring book in here. I have a little pencil pouch. This is a notebook that I'm working on now. I have some little thank you cards in here. I have a tiny notebook, lots of stickers. So I have this box of stickers that I got on Amazon, which is really fun. And then I also have these stickers in here. So that's pretty much everything that was in this tote. But as you can see, it was a lot of things that I just pulled out of here. And part of my mission in keeping this room straight is to always put things back as soon as I'm done with them. Okay, so in this tote, I have more planners. If you can see this way, how many things fit in here. And then there's space on this side. All right, so now we've made it to the section of working planners. Yes, friends, I have four working planners <laughs> that I'm utilizing right now. And I keep them in these beautiful gold covers because they make me happy. <laughs> and so right here I have another book in that says love. Right on top, this is my social media check off planner. So in this planner, it's a wrong, wrong planner by Happy Planner. So in this planner, I actually will list everything that I did for my Instagram or my YouTube channel every single day. I do try to do at least one thing for social media every single day, and so that's what that looks like. Now, the next planner, this is my, so this one was tax completion. This one is plans. So this is my social media planner that I use for my plans, what I need to get done, and deadlines. So in here, let's see, I only have a couple weeks done for July, but this is what a completed week would look like. And <laughs> this is this week. So this one is my social media planner. And this one, friends, is the heartbreaking one. <laughs> this one is all about money, okay? I found that I needed to start tracking my spending. So rather than just relying on um, an app, I have to write it down because it makes me a little bit more aware of how I'm spending my money if I have to write it down and look at it later. This one says, girls just want to have fun. And in here, I just track all my spending for the month. Last but not least, this is my everything planner. <laughs> I use this to hold information about my whole life. So my husband's schedule, my kid's sports schedule, my kid's school schedule, um, curriculum planning information, all of that stuff gets stored here. And this is what a typical week looks like. And as you can see, each task has its own color because that's how I roll. <laughs> so this is the planner that basically, um, I think some people call them catch-all. So this planner holds all the information for my whole life. <laughs> so that's why it's so enormous. <laughs> and this one is the one that I generally will take with me if I have to go somewhere um, because everything's in here. I know it's enormous, but this is what I use. 
Now, if I didn't have these planners here, I could easily fit two more of these large totes in this section. Same with the side where my books are. I could put two totes here. So that would be a total of four extra totes that I could have in here, which is something I might do in the future, depending on how my crafting grows. <laughs> I'm gonna lower the camera so that you can see what's on the desktop. Now, this is where I store my favorite things. <laughs> this is my Singer sewing machine, and this is my brother, Serger. I like having it here because I can look at it every day and it definitely reminds me that I need to get back to work. I need to sew something beautiful. And so I love being able to display it here like this. This right here is a little coaster because I do often have my coffee and tea here. And it says eat, sleep, and sew. I also keep a lamp here and it's a tiny lamp so it fits nice and perfect in that corner. Now, when I placed the order for my dream bots, they were completely sold out of the power pack, which I really wanted. So instead, I found this little extension cord power pack on Amazon, and it's perfect because it's a square, and it just kind of fits in the corner, and you can plug in four things. And it also has cell phone chargers on the side, um, and I can charge my cameras and USB things right here on the side of it, and it just doesn't take up that much space. It's perfect. Right here you can see there's already a cutout for running all of your cords for your machines through, so having this little extension cord go through that hole is perfect because I can actually plug in my sewing machine and my serger right here and my iron even because there's uh, four. I can just plug in all the things that I need, including the lamp. Right here you can see this amazing table surface that I have here. It can fit both my sewing machine and my serger next to each other or I can utilize one of my folding tables for my serger and just have my sewing machine here and have plenty of space for my fabric to fall on. And I really love this table so much. It's perfect for every craft that I could possibly want to do. It's easy to clean up. It's nice and just beautiful. I just think it's the perfect work table for me. So now we're on to the small totes on this side. On this side, we have all of my fabric markers. So, oops, I'll pick that up. So my children and I like to design our own t-shirts. So we do utilize fabric markers often. In this one I have dry erase markers up top, which I utilize for my whiteboards. And right here I have these really cool pins that have, on one end they have little pictures, so this one is throwing up a peace sign. And then on the other end it's a regular marker. So I have one little divider in the middle that separates them, but that's what that looks like. It fits a ton. Do you see how many markers that is? Look at that. Yeah. In here I have, so I have Crayola markers on that side, but those the kids use. And I honestly, I'm very particular about how I care for the items that I use for crafting. <laughs> I don't let them mix too much because I like to keep my markers nice and I don't like the colors to mix and blend and mess up. So I keep my Crayola markers on this side. Right here I have a bunch of thumbtacks and they're in different colors. I have more thumbtacks in another spot that I'm going to add to this because look at all this space. So much space. In this one I have all of my hole punchers. I do have hole punchers in different sizes. I have a couple of tools that I utilize for crafts. I also have some ring binder clips. I have some white out. <laughs> and some random pins. I have a staple remover and a pencil sharpener. I have pencil sharpeners all over the place. Like I had no idea I had so many pencil sharpeners until I was actually cleaning and organizing. It's amazing. In this one I have all my Sharpie markers and it still has plenty of space. I have highlighters on this side. Again, plenty of space. And this little guy my son made for me. <laughs> so cute, so I keep him in there. In this one, I have all of my drawing pencils, so sketching pencils. And I have all my graphite in here. So you can see. And then in the front, I have all my different erasers for sketching. I have a couple of pencil sharpeners in here. 
And then, and this one, this one's also one that has some room to grow. I have all my post-its. So I have my small post-it pads here. I have my little flag post-its in the middle, different types of flag post-its. I have the page marker ones. I have larger post-its. I have tons of paper clips in different sizes all over in here. So, and there's still room to grow in this guy. Okay, now the fun things, the things that I just, oh, I love. <laughs> They're my stickers, okay? So these are my planner stickers. Again, because I didn't have enough totes, I utilized these really awesome little containers that my planner covers came in. They're perfect. So my planner cover is this here and it came in this. So anyways, it's sturdy and it fits in there so perfectly. It definitely sits right in the tracks as it should. And when you pull it out, I have two rows of stickers. Look at this. Two rows of stickers, five books on each side. And then for this one, I have two different brands in here and it still works perfectly. On this side I have four Happy Planner sticker books. In this one I have Capital Chic Designs and these are all stickers with African American characters on them. And I love them, they're so beautiful. And so all of these stickers fit so nicely right here in this recycled box. So friends, if you have cool boxes, that come with things that you've purchased, always think about if they can be reused before you decide to toss them out because I had no idea that I was going to use this in a dream box someday, but I thought the box was cool, so I saved it, and here we are. It fits perfectly right in that section. Can you believe that? It's so cool. On this side, I have my paper cutter. So that's what this is. And as I mentioned, I like to keep things in their original packaging. And then I also have some Teflon sheets here and some iron bond all tucked in here. And even though I have quite a few things tucked in there, there's still plenty of room. Now on this shelf here, this is technically enough space to do the medium totes as well as to do, or you could do two large totes. But since I didn't have enough totes, I actually decided to use this shelf to house my hole punchers my stapler, my staples, and my um, tape roll, which I actually haven't used in a very long time. I totally forgot I even had it. Um, but this is my Happy Planner hole punch. This is my regular hole punch and stapler and all my staples. Now down here, this is a beautiful bucket. I showed you the other one on the other side. It is white with gold stripes on it. And I, I got these from Target, it's 13 by 13. I have lots of sewing stuff in here. I have sewing magazines in here. I have the foot pedals for my sewing machines in here. If you can see that. I have lots and lots of different <laughs> sewing tools in here. So it's, just imagine a 13 by 13 cube full to the max of sewing things. That's what's in here. <laughs> So right here, we have, this is a little easel. It was an activity that came, it comes with paint and all the little paint tools. It's an activity that came with one of my FabFitFun boxes. These are craft clips. These are thank you cards in various different types. More thank you cards. I have an overflow of notebooks. It's an additional notebook that does, didn't fit in my other tote up top. I have some more stickers. I thought these would be really cute for making pattern weights. So I'm hoping to do that in a future video. These are all the filler paper for all of my different planners. I always buy extra filler paper. And this is additional paper. I love paper. <laughs> and it has really fun borders. I do use these in my planner, but I also use them to write letters. Okay, so in this one, there's different types of things that I'm working on. <laughs> so this right here is a sketch that I drew a while back with my son. It's just a skull. I have some extra rulers. I have my watercolor paper. 
I have, I, so I'm trying to make a happy planner dupe using materials in my craft space. And so I have started the process and I started it, I was doing great, I'm moving quite along. And then I switched to a different project. If you're a crafter, you probably can identify with this, that there's so many things you wanna do that you find yourself hopping from one thing to the next. I do that all the time. But I got it started and um, I definitely want to revisit this because I think it will be fun and I think it will save some people money who already own a ton of craft supplies. So anyway, that's what that is. And then I have a sketchbook. I do like to sketch some of the things that I sew before I make them. And this is just a little notepad that I'm not using. Okay. So this one is a lot of fun and there's still room to grow in this, which I totally appreciate. I recently stumbled on these amazing markers. They are skin tone markers by Crayola. I've been trying to find these for so long, but they just didn't have them in my local Target. These are wonderful Cricut markers. Some of them are glitter, some of them are just colored and they fit in my Cricut maker. The skin tone crayons that I found at Target. Extra pins, I do write my planner with gel pins mostly. These are watercolor brush markers. These are amazing. These are Castle Art watercolor pencils. And so when I decided I wanted to get back into watercoloring, I thought I might try my hand at a watercolor pencil. So that's everything that's in here. And I'm happy that there's lots of room because I actually recently ordered some additional markers that haven't arrived yet that I have plenty of space for right in here. And this right here, I actually have all of my cardstock. I don't have a ton of cardstock, but I have enough, I would say. Um, this is different colors, and they're all 12 by 12. Okay, so now we've arrived at my second fabric section. Now, <laughs> these fabrics I'm in love with. This is a color scheme that I wear a lot and just seeing them makes me so happy. So I'm really excited to be able to display them like this. But I have some florals and then I have some solids. Some of them are linen, bubble gauze. And then this right here, my best friend made this for me <laughs> when she was taking this uh, ceramics course. And I just love it. And I put broken pins and things in here. Um, right now, I house my pin cushion on top, and this pin cushion has different needles that I've used once or twice that I think I can get a little bit more use out of. <laughs> this one here is a random tote, and in here I have my reading glasses, one of my pairs. I keep them in pretty much every room of the house. I have some dry erasers, dry erase marker erasers. I have some Tylenol. I have my earbuds. I have lots of little rulers for pattern making and altering. I have this little pouch here is full of small washies and it also has some, what is this called, crafter's tape in here. This one here has all of my acrylic paints that I'm using right now. I threw out a lot of dried out bad old paint, but this is what's left. And I have lots of little iron-on patches for when I make my kids clothes. I have some cool baseball buttons in here for the boys when I make them little things. And then I have a candy stash. <laughs> I have to hide candy from my kids. If I wanna have something sweet, I have to hide it or they get to it before I do. So here's some Twix. And here is some sour straws. And it's up high, so they have no idea it's there. <laughs> Does anybody else hide their candy from their kids? Ah, okay, so this one right here is primarily washies. I do use a lot of different types of washies for my planners. And on this side, I have some extra um, planner discs. I have more crafters tape. I have more white out. These, this one is empty. I haven't decided what I want to put in here, but I do love these containers. I think they're great. This is a couple of ribbons that actually were on here, 
but they just fell apart. I don't know how to fix them and they won't stay on the little plastic spool that's in the middle of them. So I stuck them in here so that they wouldn't get all tangled in a mess. So that's what that is. These are washers. I use them as pattern weights when I'm sewing, but I plan to turn these into some polymer clay pattern weights that I'm going to make myself. And then these are fabric clips. Lots and lots of fabric clips. Right here we have pattern weights that I just purchased that look like donuts. I love them. And this is a bag of scrunchies. <laughs> I make scrunchies. I sell them. I gift them. And this is just a bag of scrunchies. So this is my tote of rubber bands. Right here we have the rest of my ribbons that actually behaved and stayed on their little spools. And so the cool thing about this dream box is it came with two of these rods. So on the other side of my dream box, I'm use, utilizing one for paper towels. And on this side, I'm using one to hold my ribbons. And I love that. Okay, now on this one, it's kind of random, but I love it. Right here, I have some tacky glue for crafting. I have a little bum bum cream container that I repurposed for paper clips. So these are just silver paper clips. I use them more often than I use the colored ones. So they are out a lot of the time. I have the tweezers that go to my serger right here because I wanted to have quick, easy access to them. And I hate to be ashy. <laughs> so I always have different types of lotions um, close by. So one of them is for eczema and the other one is just fragrant lotion. Now here, there's lots of extra little um, adjusting tools that you can use when you are deciding how you want to set up your totes and your trays and your everything. And so the extras I stuck here. So here, we have all of my adult scissors, okay? So these are the snips that I use when I'm sewing to clip threads. I also use these for threads. These are my fabric scissors, which is why they have this little tie on them. These are both paper scissors. And this is more lotion. This is lotion that I use all the time. <laughs> it's not as thick as these, and it's just a light lotion that I can use in between sanitizing and washing my hands. These are my skin tone markers. I love these so much. I got them on Amazon. And that's what they look like. I have my infusible ink markers by Cricut. My dry erase markers. I have all of my planner markers. So if you take a look in there, I have pretty much every color you could want. And um, these are gel on this side and these are just regular markers on the other side. Down here we have buttons. These are additional sewing tools that I have from sewing subscriptions that I want to keep together so that I remember which project they go to. Is safety pins. Down here I have all of my Rit dye for tie dye. So right now I have these two colors and then this is color stay. And there you have it, the little squeeze bottles and gloves for my next tie dye project. You can see what's stored under here and the table is safe in the upright position and it won't fall down on you. Okay, so down here we have lots of curriculum. <laughs> and I have, so here is a lot of construction paper in various different sizes and colors. And I have some wonderful wooden puzzles and this is an additional shelf that I haven't decided if I want to use yet. Right here I have lots of different magnet activities, individual activities that I can set up for kids. Down here, I have a larger container. On top of it, there's the overflow of more construction paper. And then on this bigger container, it's all of the kid paint smocks. Lots of things. <laughs> Language cubes. So that's it, guys. That's everything in my dream box. I'm going to show you how I close it up. And to be perfectly honest, it's partially open most of the day, and I'll show you what it looks like most of the time, uh, but I do want you to be able to see how it closes up. As you can see, there's a tiny little gap in between here, and the reason why there's a gap is because the house that I live in, our house, is over 100 years old, so some of the floors in our house are not perfectly even. Um, so because of that, 
this is not, it's hard to tell, but it's not perfectly even on the ground. So that's why it doesn't completely close. There's a tiny little gap. It seems to be more noticeable at the bottom, but if you have very level floors, you won't have this problem. But it's a beautiful piece of furniture that sits on this wall. And most of the time I have it halfway open because this actually sticks out pretty far away from the wall. I'll actually move the camera so that you can see what I'm talking about. Um, so you have to be creative about where you store it unless you plan on storing something on either side of it. As you can see here, I have, this is what I call my Cricut cart. I have my Cricut maker. I have my heat press. I have all of my supplies that I need for both in here, like all the tools and everything. I have my ironing mat. I have a, a, a drawing board here. I have my supplementation ink printer. I have my small Cricut. And then I have a sign here. I'll bring you in close because I think it's super cute. Okay, so this sign matches my other sign and it says make things happen. And it's just a reminder that I can get things done if I really want to. Okay, so as you can see from this side of the room, this dream box comes off the wall pretty far. So as I mentioned, you're going to want to be creative about where you store it. Do you see how deep that is? It's pretty deep. So I don't have it closed up like this all the time. I would say if we were going to have guessed that I would close it up like this, but just for the purpose of our regular everyday use, I do have it halfway open and I'll show you what that looks like. And this is how it looks all day, every day. It doesn't take up too much space when it's out like this. And I can utilize all the things that I need to use right now. You know, all my planning supplies, uh, any circle time manipulatives. I can access my kids' art and then close it back up. And so this is how it sits every day. All right, so that was my dream box tour. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please do subscribe to my channel. And if you are interested in buying your very own dream box and you want to save a little money, please do consider using my affiliate code below. That will save you $100 off the purchase of your dream box. Now, I will be changing some things as I live in this space a little bit more, and as I make those changes, I will be sure to share those with you. I also plan to do lots of tutorials using the space that I've created here, and so I'm excited to share sewing tutorials, craft tutorials, all of those things right here at my dream box with you. So please stay tuned for those videos. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please do give me a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel. Bye.